SCP stands for Secure, Contain, Protect. The SCP Foundation is a fictional secret organization responsible for capturing and containing various paranormal, supernatural, and other mysterious phenomena that are unexplained by mainstream science. Their aim is to ensure their existence and dangers are hidden from society. The Foundation holds thousands of files that document an SCP object and the means of keeping it contained. However, despite its extremely secretive nature, the Foundation is tasked by governments around the world to capture and manage various unexplained phenomena that defy the known laws of nature. This includes anything from living beings and creatures to incomprehensible entities with supernatural abilities or other highly unusual properties. If left uncontained, many of the more dangerous anomalies will severely threaten humans, or even all life on Earth, so their existence is hidden and withheld from the general public to prevent mass hysteria and allow human civilization to continue functioning normally. Whenever a new SCP anomaly is discovered, teams of undercover Foundation agents are deployed to either collect and transport the object to a Foundation facility, or to contain it at its location of discovery if transportation is impossible. All knowledge of these entities is kept secret from the public, often by drugging witnesses to erase their memories. Once SCPs are contained and secured at the Foundation's secret facilities by armed guards, they are studied and researched by scientists who acquire human test subjects known as D-Class personnel. These are usually convicted criminals taken from prisons around the world. The test subjects are then forced to interact with SCPs in science experiments or containment procedures, sometimes resulting in their death. The Foundation maintains documentation for all SCPs and experiments carried out on them on their wiki.website. website. In this video, we aim to give you a taste of some of their terrifying creations. So prepare yourself. Now before we begin, we just like to say that if you enjoy our videos and find value in our work, then consider supporting us over on Patreon. Lots of our videos are not ad friendly, and thanks to the Patreon and our sponsorships, we're able to keep covering the topics you love, despite YouTube's ad rules not liking them. Not only will you be supporting our channel, but you also get access to all of our exclusive full-length documentaries, like Unit 731, The Mysterious Life and Death of Stanley Kubrick, a documentary on Wuhan Lab, and all of our Murderous Minds and Mind of Madness episodes, all for just $2 a month, and you can cancel any time you want. We also want to remind you all, that as has always been the case, if you genuinely cannot afford $2 a month, we offer all of our Patreon exclusive content for free, no questions asked. We understand times are tough, and not everyone can afford it, but still enjoy our work. So if you cannot, just drop us an email at patreon at topfives.co.uk to see all of our content for free. Now, this is a creepy one, so it's time to hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. SCP-3063 This terrifying, telepathic entity manifests itself as an adult male housefly. It is believed to have existed for at least 4,000 years, and evidence of its existence has been discovered in early Canaanite settlements. SCP-3063 manifestations have a single goal, and that is to make an agreement with a human. The terms of the agreement vary greatly, but almost always involve SCP-3063 promising something that an individual greatly desires in exchange for an unspecified price. This could be money, political power, or the love of other individuals, and in some cases the ability to reality bending is offered. Before making an offer, it is thought that SCP-3063 reads the thoughts of their victim to tailor an offer specific to them and once it engages, it refuses to discuss anything other than the terms of its agreement. If the victim accepts the terms of agreement, 3063 manifestation will immediately combust and die, at which point the individual will receive what they were promised. If they do not accept, 
SCP-3063 will persist with larger and larger offers until either the individual accepts or the manifestation is destroyed by the victim. However, swatting the fly will call successive manifestations to contact the victim until they consent to the agreement. Once the agreement is made, the individual will be granted their wish, but it comes at a terrible price. 2,376 days later, victims will be infested internally. Up to 20,000 fertilized eggs, representing virtually all known species of flies, will spontaneously appear within the lungs, throat, stomach, intestines, sinuses, ear canals, rectum, urethra, and muscle tissues. The eggs will then hatch naturally, and the resulting maggots will begin consuming all internal body tissue over a period of 3 to 14 days. When this period has elapsed, the maggots will pupate and lie dormant for 2 to 6 days before the pupae will emerge as adult flies. The newly born flies will continue consuming their host and breeding with each other until the victim has sustained horrific internal damage, resulting in death. This long drawn out demise can take anything from one to five weeks, and the victim will remain conscious throughout, causing horrendous distress. So much so, that 70% of individuals affected will attempt suicide. When the victim finally dies, the remaining flies will cease reproducing, and enter a stage of dormancy, during which they will eventually starve and die. However, a new manifestation of SCP-3063 would appear shortly after and move on to their next victim. There is no known method of averting this process. To date, six Foundation personnel have been contacted by SCP-3063 and attempts have been made to alter the terms of agreement to entrap SCP-3063 into neutralizing itself, though none have been successful. After the victim and any generated flies have died, remains are to be treated with chemicals and incinerated. It's unknown if 3063 manifests as a new individual housefly or inhabits the body of an existing one. Something to think about next time you hear a fly buzzing around your head. SCP-082 SCP-082 is genetically human, but through some unknown process, either chemical, hormonal, cancerous, or supernatural, it has grown to giant proportions and stands at around 8 feet tall, weighing about 700 pounds, and its physical characteristics are grossly disproportionate to the rest of its body. In human terms, SCP-082 would be considered obese, but with its slightly pointed balding head, bulbous nose and dark sunken eyes, it's a terrifying sight, and its huge muscular arms and 30 centimeter fist make it potentially extremely dangerous. SCP-082's overall physical appearance is exacerbated by several scars all over its body, and scans have revealed numerous bullets, knife and sword blades lodged in its flesh. 082 refers to itself as Fernand and speaks fluent French and heavily accented English. While Ferdinand speaks, it does so through massive clenched teeth and only parts its teeth to sing and eat. It has also been noted that for unknown reasons, 082 will clench its teeth so hard that the gums bleed. Fernand is known to shave its facial hair with a large butcher's knife provided initially for food preparation. Outwardly, Fernand is very friendly and carefree and enjoys dressing up in various fashions, wearing anything from military uniforms to women's clothing. However, he is not to be trusted, is erratic, and without provocation, is prone to attacking and eating humans. Being especially fond of heads, using its powerful jaw to crack through the skull. It's been observed that Fernand cannot differentiate fact from fiction when he reads or watches television. He has expressed a great desire to meet his favorite film character, Hannibal Lecter, who he believes is real. In fact, Fernand will often take on the identity of fictional characters, claiming to be anything from a vampire to Big Bird. If SCP-082 was ever released or escaped, it would pose a severe threat to the public. For this reason, it resides in enlarged living quarters, located at Armed Biocontainment Area 14. 
Standard weapons have little effect in policing SCP-082, but cooperation is easily achieved through a charade, and Fernand is currently under the impression that it has been made the King of France, and that its containment area is a grand palace designed for its protection. All personnel who interact with him are aware of this ruse, and housekeeping personnel are to be Class D only. To date, it's unknown how many Class D personnel have had their heads eaten by 082. SCP-10031 and 2 SCP-10031 is an adult tapeworm of the species Achinococcus granulosus. Like others of its species, 10031 inhabits the small intestines of carnivores, typically dogs, where it produces eggs that are passed in the host species. The eggs can survive for an unspecified number of years in the outside environment. Similar to other tapeworms, 10031 is capable of entering the gastrointestinal tract of a human subject via consumption of contaminated food. They then hatch into larvae, which burrow into internal tissue. It is at this stage that SCP-1003 differs from normal Enchinocus granulosus. Instead of developing into cysts, the larvae evolve into creatures which resemble human embryos. These embryos become SCP-10032. Thankfully, the vast majority of 10032 specimens die before they have a chance to develop. However, some do survive and embed themselves in nutrient-rich human tissue, such as the liver. As SCP-10032 grows, they sap the nutrients from their human host, causing them significant problems. By eight weeks, 10032 is as mature as a three-week-old human fetus, though larger at around 13 to 16 centimeters. Once it has reached this stage, it will have developed sharp hooked teeth that it will use to consume the human host from within, causing its growth to accelerate to an even greater extent. By the time it has fully consumed the entire host, it would have developed into a human-looking child with a physical age ranging from 10 months to 11 years, depending on the body mass of the human. In extreme cases, where the host is morbidly obese, it can be as large as a 13 to 15 year old teenager. From its birth, it will lose its hooked teeth, along with its cannibalistic tendencies, and will be indistinguishable from a human in every respect, with no knowledge or memory of having been a parasite. It will even possess language skills appropriate to its physical age. If found, instances of SCP-10032 are usually taken into orphanages and sometimes adopted by foster parents. Their only abnormal properties at this stage are that their DNA is still identical to that of a tapeworm, and that their body fluids, including sweat and saliva, contain tapeworm protoscolex, which carries on infecting carnivores and develops into 10031, thus continuing the cycle. 10032 only develops in human hosts, not in any other carnivorous animal. Currently, the Foundation has an unknown number of 10032s in its possession, all of which are held in separate, heavily guarded, high-security cells at Bio-Research Area 13. SCP-525 SCP-525 consists of multiple disjointed arthropod legs, 10 to 15 centimeters in length. DNA identification has been inconclusive, but the closest match so far is to the brown recluse spider, Loxosceles reclusa. The base of each leg ends in several minute hooks capable of perforating flesh. When alone or in proximity with fewer than six others, 525 is immobile. But when eight components of 525 are brought within 0.6 meters of each other, their legs will immediately crawl into a group and attach themselves into a single entity, referred to as 5251. At this stage, the speed of its movement dramatically increases and it will endeavor to make contact with the closest human. When a suitable victim is found, 5251 will climb directly towards the eye, and after centering itself over the socket, four legs will secure the eyelid open, while the others remove the eye 
with careful precision to avoid damaging it. Once the eye is free from the socket, 5251 will implant the base of each leg into the eye and, if undisturbed, will lay what appears to be eggs into the empty socket. It's unclear what 5251 uses the eyeball for, as it does not appear to use it to see. Over time, the removed eye dehydrates, eventually turning the same reddish color as 525. After two to three weeks, 5251 will abandon the eye and begin its search for another. By far its preferred eyeballs are human, and it has little interest in reptiles, fish or birds, but an experiment on a crocodile eye resulted in 521 attempting eye removal, resulting in blinding the creature, but failed to completely remove it. Therefore, all instances of 525 have not responded to crocodiles, even those not present at the initial experiment. An experiment using D-Class personnel 1548 yielded the following results after exposure to 5251. After eyeball removal, 14 ovoids resembling opaque toad eggs were discovered embedded in the extraocular muscles of D1548. Three eggs were removed and D1548 was placed under quarantine. Two weeks later, the injury is healing as normal and the removed eggs that were stored in the lab have liquefied and decomposed. Three weeks after, D1548 complains of increasing phantom pressure in his empty eye socket and demands a mirror, a request that is declined. Muscle tissue has now healed over and obscured the eggs. By week four, D1548 forcefully removes bandages and attempts to dig into his eye socket. He is successfully restrained. 48 hours after initial exposure, 11 fully formed components of SCP-525 erupt from D1548 socket and begin to come together to restart the search for another eye. SCP-049 SCP-049 is a humanoid entity roughly 1.9 meters in height who looks like a medieval plague doctor. The entity was discovered during the investigation of a series of unknown disappearances in the town of Montauban in southern France. During a raid on a local home, investigators found several instances of SCP-0492. These were the reanimated corpses that 049 had operated on, which we'll explain more on them later. While 0492 had to be forcefully restrained due to their hostility, 049 watched on calmly making notes in its journal, although it was written in an unknown language. After all of the 0492 instances were destroyed, 049 willingly surrendered and entered Foundation custody. At first sight, 049 appears to be wearing the thick robes and the ceramic mask, indicative of the plague doctor profession. However, the usual cloth garments seem to have grown out of the body of 049, and are now nearly indistinguishable from whatever form is beneath them, taking on a thick hide-like appearance. Although x-rays indicate that despite this, 049 does have humanoid skeletal structure beneath its outer layer. 049 is capable of speech in a variety of languages, though tends to prefer English or medieval French, and claims it originated in 15th century France. 049 is normally friendly and cooperative with Foundation staff, but can become incredibly agitated or outright aggressive if it feels that it is in the presence of something it calls pestilence. In human terms, pestilence is associated with fatal epidemic diseases, especially bubonic plague. Although in the case of 049, it's unknown what it considers pestilence. But if it thinks an individual is affected by pestilence, then it becomes very hostile and dangerous, often having to be restrained to prevent fatal attacks. It's known that 049 is capable of causing all biological functions of an organism to cease just through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown, and autopsies of 049's victims have proved inconclusive. On occasions when 049 has killed a Foundation worker, it becomes very frustrated and remorseful blaming the pestilence for its actions, and will usually try to perform a crude surgery on the corpse 
using the implements contained within its anomalously large black doctor's bag it carries at all times. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in the creation of instances of the previously mentioned 0492. These reanimated corpses do not seem to retain any of their previous memories or mental functions and have only basic motor skills and response mechanisms. However, they can become extremely aggressive if provoked or if directed to by 049. 0492s have active biological functions, though they are vastly different from currently understood human physiology. 049 claims these reanimated corpses have been cured of the pestilence. One victim of 049 was Dr. Raymond Ham, a foundation researcher who interviewed 049 to try and find out what pestilence was. Here is a clip of his first interview. Alors, comment nous devrions nous commencer une introduction? Is that, is that French? Can we get a translator? The King's English. No need for translation, sir. I can speak it well enough. Good. My name is Dr. Raymond Ham, and I... Ah, a doctor. A like-minded individual, no doubt. Wherein is your speciality, sir? Cryptobiology. Why? <laughs> a medical man such as myself wanders abound, and here I worried I had been abducted by common street thugs. This place, then, this is your laboratory. I had wondered, as clean as it is, and with such little trace of the pestilence here. The pestilence? What do you mean? The scourge. The great dying. Come now, you know, the... Mm, what is it they call it? The... The... Ah, no matter. The pestilence, yes. It abounds outside these walls, you know. So many have succumbed. And many more will continue to, until such time as a perfect cure can be developed. Fortunately, I am very close. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it, you see. The cure, to end all cures. When you say the great dying, are you talking about the bubonic plague? I don't know what that is. Well, I see. Right, well... The entities our agents encountered at the house, they were dead when you encountered them, yes? You reanimated them. Hmm. In a manner of speaking, you see things too simply, Doctor. Expand your horizons. Life and death. Sickness and health. These are amateur terms for amateur physicians. There is only one ailment that exists in the world of men, and that is the pestilence, and nothing else. Make no mistake, they were very ill. All of them. You think you cured those people? Indeed. My cure is most effective. But the things we recovered were not human. Yes, well, it is not a perfect cure, but that will come with time, and further experimentation. I have spent a lifetime Developing my methods, Dr. Ham, and will spend a lifetime more, if necessary. Now, we have wasted too much time. There is work to do. I will require a laboratory of my own, one where I can continue my research unimpeded. And assistance, of course, though I can provide those on my own. In time. <laughs> Oh, I don't think our organization would be willing to... Nonsense. We are all men of science. Fetch your coat and show me to my quarters, Doctor. Our work begins now. Dr. Ham continued to interview 049 and supplied it with animal corpses to experiment on. However, on April 16, 2017, as Dr. Ham was entering 049's test chamber to conduct another routine interview, the entity began to grow anxious and asked Dr. Ham if he was feeling well. Following protocol, Dr. Ham reminded 049 that the interview was required, after which the entity became hostile and attacked Dr. Ham, killing him. Due to a lapse in security protocol, and because Dr. Ham did not activate the in-chamber emergency system, 
his corpse was not discovered until three hours later, by which point 049 had converted it into an instance of 0492. After the death of Dr. Ham, this was one of a couple of chilling interviews carried out to try and establish why 049 killed the doctor. SCP-049, we are conducting this interview to close out our investigation of your actions taken on April 16th that resulted in the death of a staff member. Do you have any comments to make? Only that I look forward to the day when you will allow me to resume my work. I have spent the last few weeks compiling my notes and constructing a new theory for how the pestilence was able to infect someone in such an insidious manner that I nearly couldn't detect it. Have you experienced any remorse for your actions, for the death of Dr. Ham? Ah, yes. Well, the death of a colleague is always regrettable. But in the face of the pestilence, we must be swift, Doctor, and act without hesitation. Dr. Sherman noted in his report that you seemed to be mournful during your initial interview. Mourn? Perhaps. I had not thought that. It is lamentable that a fellow doctor became infected, but the work continues. Regrettable as as it was, Dr. Ham's death provided important insight. Living human subjects are the only way to proceed forward, I am decided. My cure is of little use on dead flesh, and I have gleaned all I can from your generous supply of corpses. My desires turn towards tending to those still living who suffer from the disease. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. (laughs) Oh, Doctor. I wouldn't be so sure. 049 is currently contained within a standard secure humanoid containment cell in Research Sector 02 at Site 19. In order to pacify 049, The entity is to be provided with the corpse of a recently deceased animal, typically a bovine or other large mammal, once every two weeks for it to study. Any corpses that become 0492s are to be removed and incinerated. Since the death of Dr. Ham, 049 is no longer permitted to interact with human subjects, and requests for human subjects are currently denied. In a recent update to these procedures, 049 is no longer to be provided with any additional corpses to be used in its surgeries. So that's it for this video. We hope you enjoyed our first look at SCP creations. If you did enjoy this video, then we're happy to look at other SCP entities and horrors, as there are many of them. Remember everyone, this is all fictional. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.